Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? I hope you're doing great. Today we're going to talk about input and output in Lua. So it's going to be kind of fun. But before we get started, uh, let me just tell you to please go down into the description box. Check it out. There's a bunch of useful links down there to download the Lua environment, to, uh, to learn about Lua a little more in detail if you want to. You can check out my support page or follow me on Twitter. That will help me out so much. Um, otherwise, you can just drop a like or subscribe if you want to. Uh, if you don't want to do that even, just keep watching. I'm sure you're, you'll be happy with just that. So uh, if we just get started, input and output. It's very simple in Lua to do input and output. And I, all I did was I created a folder called Lua on my desktop. And I went into there and I created a Lua file in there called Lua.io.lua. You can name it whatever you want. Just make sure you have the .lua after and it's not .txt.lua or anything like that. So make sure you know you can see your extensions on your files and you can remove all the unwanted extensions. So all you want is .lua. Uh, anyway, if we get started, let me just tell you. So let's get started with printing out to the screen. Now the way this works is through a function and a stream. So a function, we haven't talked about that yet, but basically you can think about it as something that someone else wrote for you, some a bunch of code that does something, but all you have to do is write a little word or something like that to call this function and execute all that code. Okay, so it does a bunch of shit for you. And there's a bunch of these libraries that you can use in Lua, like the math library or something, where people have created functionality that you can that makes it easy for you. So you don't have to write all that functionality yourself. So one of these libraries is the IO library. And this stands for the input output library, right? So you can do IO dot and then you have a bunch of functionality. You have read, you have write, you have a bunch of stuff that you can do for files and for the screen. So we want to output to the screen, right? To the terminal. So for that, there is a function called write, io.write, and a function called print. So we're going to start off with just print, a simple print. I'm going to print out something to the screen, okay? And the way you do that is you write print, a parenthesis, to start off the whole function. And something that you put in the function is called a parameter. This is the parameter, the data you want to actually print to the screen. So you can write whatever the hell you want here. I'm just going to write hello world you can write uh, you can create spaces in between you can do anything as long as you start and end it with the two quotation marks and you end the whole function with the uh, parentheses here to end so if I just save this and I run uh, I say Lua actually I'm gonna start Lua and I'm gonna do do file Lua IO dot Lua and I run that and it says hello world and I'm gonna add a little uh, exclamation point here. Now I want you to note that once Lua World was done, it went down a new line and it started the next line down here. But if I exchange this, I'm just going to copy this. If I exchange this with io.write like that and I run this, you'll see that it starts here. They, they didn't create a new line for me. So io.write is a little different in that sense that if you want an automatic new line, you can use print. If you use io.write, you're going to have to create your own new lines. And the way you do that is there are two ways. What I like to do is I like to comma separate everything. So in this function, you can make a bunch of comma separated stuff to format your output the way you want. So you can write a little string here, and then you can write something else here, something, whatever. You can write a number. You can write whatever the hell you want, as long as you separate it with a comma. Obviously, I can continue writing it in this string here. But it makes it a little cleaner if you kind of comma separate everything. That is different from one another, okay? So in new line, I find that it's kind of different. So you just write backslash like that, new line, and end. Start with the double quotation, end with the quotation mark like that. Um, in a stream, the Lua interpreter can notice these backslashes, and it will the character directly after that tells it what to do. So a backslash any character after that actually has a function. So this is, tells the interpreter in the stream to print a new line, to create a new line and start off after that. Anything after that will be on a new line. And I can make multiple of these. I can make another new line right after here and it will print two new lines and so on and so on. As long as I have the backslash and the end. Okay. Um, another thing is you can write tabs as well. T is for tab. There's a bunch of these things that you can use, shorthand notations, I think they're called, something like that. Uh, you can check it out 
on Lua's page or in C++, there's pretty much the same uh, backslash and a character. I can write this inside here as well, new line. It doesn't have to be a space in between. I can just do that and it will notice this. And if I, whoops, what the hell did I just do? Did I just close everything? Okay, whatever. Uh, let's start it again. Uh, Lua IO, there we go. Okay, fine. All right, we're fine. Let me just run this and see how it made the new line after, right? And if I write something else after this, it will come on a new line right after. See? Uh, so that's one way that you can do it. I'll have it like that. One on Another thing you can do is you can kind of make it clean for yourself. Make it easier to read. After every comma, I kind of make a new line on my own. This won't, this won't matter anything if you have a space here or not. Uh, it's just for you your reading sake. It will still have the same effect. If I run this, it will there will be a new line after that. So I'll make a new line and I'll print something something else out here. Line two, like that, and I'll run this. So hello world, line two, and then I can make a, another comma here and a new line, like this. Run that, hello world, line two, boom, 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 easy peasy. Um, so yeah, that's one way you can string a bunch of stuff together. Now I'm gonna make a little example here. I'm gonna say name equals search and age equals uh, 28 so see the difference here this is a string and this is age and we don't have to tell it what type we want obviously because Lua is very dynamic you can put anything into anything it doesn't really matter so now we have two things now I want to print these out for the user to see so I'm gonna use IO write to print these out so I'm gonna say I'm gonna make it clean so name like that, comma, name, like that, comma, age, comma, age, okay, and I'm going to end the function there. And one problem we're going to have here, if I run this, we're going to have search, that's fine, but the name and the age are right after one another. So one thing you can do is you can actually add a space before age, run it, and you'll see that that space appears right there. And I'm going to make a new line here as well, just to end everything out. Now what I can do as well is I can make a new line between these two lines, like this. Then the name and the age, wait, I forgot the comma, there you go. So you, the name and the age come after one another, just like that, see? So that's kind of how you can format this input and output. Just play around with this, have fun with it, Try to try to make several things which you can kind of string together and print out in a nice way with a bunch of kind of um, for example I can do this I can make a bunch of lines like this and print a new line comma and if I run the file it will have this this line separator right here just like that between this and that and I can do the same thing at the end here which will give me uh, wait, remove the end comma there. It will give you an error like that. Let me see. Wait. Uh, oh, this is the comma. I forgot. There we go. See how I have two line separators now. So it kind of makes it look cooler. So you can you can do you can play around with this if you want. Um, cool. So there you go. Now, for those of you who didn't follow through properly on the last video, please check it out if you can because I talk about variables there. And I'm initializing the variables. I'm giving them a start value as I'm creating them here. Uh, but you don't have, you can give them something rubbish just to initialize them like that because I want to get these from the keyboard now. I want the user, I want you to input values into these from the keyboard. So make it kind of dynamic and it will print out anything I input. So I'm going to do io.read now this on its own is gonna ask for something from the keyboard but it's not gonna put it into anything and it's not gonna I'm not gonna know what the hell's going on so this is kinda just have making the program wait so if I run this it's just gonna kinda oh wait I need to save it as well uh, there you go so it's just making the program wait so I can write anything here and it's gonna run see name is nothing age is zero just like that but I wanna make this read and put it into a variable. So I'm going to say name equals IO read. So anything I put in from my keyboard is going to go into this variable name. And then it's going to eventually be printed out here. Okay? But how does the user know? Like if I run this program, no, not that. Uh, if I run this program, 
how do you know what the hell you're waiting for? Like, it's just waiting here. Like, I can, I can, I can write my name and it's gonna output it properly, but I don't know what's going on. So you want to make sure your user knows what it's waiting on, what that user is waiting on, right? So I'm gonna do IO write. I'm actually gonna do print here. I'm gonna use print because it gives me a new line automatically. So it's a good place to use int. But actually, if you don't, if you don't want to do that, you can actually IO write and the right weight will be right after the line you print out. So let me show you the difference. Enter name, like that. And I make a little separator here, a little white space to make it a little cleaner. So now when I run this, it's gonna say enter name and it's gonna wait right after here. If I did print, it would wait down here. It doesn't look as good. So enter name, I can say search, and then it prints that out, right? Now I wanna do the same thing for my age. So H, and then I'm going to put it into H, like that, okay? So this is more for the user to know what the hell's going on. This is the actual functionality. So I'm reading it from the keyboard into this variable. And if I run this again, I can say maybe Eric. Shout out to all the Eric's who are 24 years old, you know? And you know, please comment in the comment section, Eric, uh, 24 years, if you're there. And a special prize in the next video, all right? So just check that out. <laughs> so there you go. You get your name. And your age and I can input I can run this program several times for different names I can say uh, let's see I can write um, uh, David who is 34 just like that it will print that out for me so it's it's giving me an option to input something from the keyboard and print it out now the IO library like I said has functionality for file input and output so I can kind of make I can input stuff from the keyboard and print it out to a file I can input stuff from the file and print it out to the screen. You can do a bunch of stuff with this library. It's really cool. It's really, really dynamic. And um, it's really nice. Lua is really nice for all of these input output stuff. And it's really, really cool. But there is one problem where if we run it, I can enter the name as 234 and enter the age as David. David. Okay, fine. See, it doesn't control where I'm inputting what because Lua is so dynamic. You can input anything into anything. So it doesn't matter, it changes stuff. So for a way to fix this, we'll talk about that later. And once we get into functions and loops and stuff like that, we'll talk about it. So don't freak out too much. Just, just make sure that you, you write this correctly. Just get good at this. And then we'll check the errors and stuff like that later and control what goes into what. Uh, because to do that, you need to know a bunch of stuff that we aren't ready to really talk about right now. But yeah, for now, just play around with this. Have fun. Um, see if you get any errors and if you solve them and just make sure you read these error messages what it actually says so if you get a something like that expected boom to close at line 4 go to line 4 check it out um, see what you can do to fix that error but otherwise just check this code you should be fine and you can string together a bunch of stuff if you want name age address and, and just print it out if you want to do that so for this first video input and output to the terminal um, we're pretty much done. So yeah, thank you for sticking with me. Check out the description box for a bunch of useful links. Like, subscribe if you can. Otherwise, keep learning, work hard, and I'll see you guys and girls in the next video, alright? Take care. Bye-bye.